What's that? The office. Uh, I can never tell. The I, I would assume so, but. Okay, folks, let's get started. Day after the exam. So obviously many of you have gotten the message the exam is available in the BB office, ALS 2018. Um, it was uh, in between the last two exams. The average on this exam was 70. Uh, somebody asked me last time what I like to see in an exam in 70s. I'm pretty. I'm usually pretty happy if you make a 70. So I was. I was. You hit a 70 on the nose. It was 70.01. I think was the average on the exam. So that was interesting. Uh, the low on the exam was 18. The high was 100. One person made 100. Uh, I won't pass the name along so that you guys will not kill that person. But um, it was uh, a very good performance. Um, in general, I think people went up a little bit, which is kind of what the average went up a little bit. Some people. Still having some difficulty, and I know the grades are concerns. I haven't yet had a chance to post the uh, grade distribution because I just got the grades uh, recorded myself uh, by mid-afternoon. I've been in meetings ever since then, but um, I will uh, post a distribution to, uh, this evening uh, about grades, and so you can see where you are and so forth. And as always, if you have questions or concerns, please come and see me, and I'll be happy to uh, talk to you and hopefully give you some guidance. So, uh, in general, I thought that. Uh, Performance was fairly good. Uh, one of the things that happens at this point is you've been hit with a lot of information. And uh, I know that information was pretty overwhelming. So to see an average of 70 on an exam like that, I was uh, fairly pleased myself. Uh, as I said, I know there's places for improvement. But in general, as for the class, I kind of like where the class is at. I know you guys have worked very, very hard uh, this term. And um, I'm, uh, I'm certainly pleased with what you're doing. So um, that's my for what it's worth. Yes, Casey. Okay, so for the final, how are you going to get ready for the final? The uh, final, as you know, you'll have you'll be able to use a note card that I give you uh, that you will use handwritten notes. You cannot use printed note cards, and you have to get the note card from me. So that's number one. You have to get the note card from me. I will bring it to class. You can get it here, but you have to underline, have to get it from me. If you use a note card besides what I give you, you will lose points. If you don't have a note card, you will lose points. You can leave it blank if you want to, and sometimes people actually do that. But the point is that you have to get a note card from me uh, for the final exam. That's kind of your ticket for the final exam. Okay. Now, in terms of preparation, which is what I think you were asking, uh, how should you prepare for the exam? Uh, there's many ways of doing it. My general guidelines are as follows. Um, I would recommend, first of all, that you look over the old exams that you've seen and make sure you, you use that as your outline for concepts for old material. All right. The questions aren't going to be the same, but the general topics are going to be the same. All right. I am never going to go back and pick out obscure things that uh, I didn't uh, discuss in the previous exams, but the topics are, are fair game. So that's that's one uh, piece of advice. The new material versus old material on the exam. Um, if you look at the number of lectures that we have on uh, new material compared to the total number of lectures in the term, there's 40 lectures about about what 37 lectures in the term. I think is what it comes down to. Uh, or 36, we, I guess we have Monday off. So 36 lectures in the term, and there's approximately eight or nine lectures of new material, which means that roughly 25 to 30 percent of the final exam will be new material, and the remainder will be things that you've already seen. So some of those things that you did well on, you can feel very good about. If you didn't do well on, it might be good to brush up on and make sure that you're getting on top of. And um, the exam uh, in general will be a little bit over uh, I should say a little bit over. It'll be a little bit less than twice as long as the uh, as the uh, other exams. So typically, I make a final exam that has about 150 points on it, um, and I'm sort of planning to keep that and do that here. The, the format of the exam will be the same as you've seen before. So, you had a question? That was it. Okay. So how long is it going to be? Yeah, yeah. Uh, time is rarely a factor on the final exam. Uh, again, there's it's about one and a half times as long, uh, approximately, uh, as the as the other ones. Yes, sir, uh, Andy. The key is, yeah, there's a key posted outside my office, and the keys are all, uh, should all be there. Yeah. They should all be there. Yeah. Yes, uh, Lynette. I was just wondering how big the note card is that you give us. 
How big is the note card? Well, I guess you'll find out. It's about this big. It's, it's, it, it surprises people how big it is. Let's put it that way. So I'll let you decide if that's a good surprise or a bad surprise. But you'll find out when I give you the note card. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I will bring it to class, uh, and you can get it in class. Well, we'll see. It might pay to come to class. OK, so come to class and get your note cards. All right. Um, so that's where we are with, with the final. Um, and the end is rapidly approaching, and so things really do crunch towards the end. And uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of material. So hopefully you, you guys have done fairly well on a lot of material so far. Hopefully you're with me uh, as we head to the final stretch. So OK. Well, um, last time I got through quite a bit of material. I guess I'm not telling you anything you didn't already know. Got all the way through the citric acid cycle. And we even saw some of the things about how the cycle ties to other pathways. I described some of those to you, so I'm not going to um, uh, go through those uh, right here. But I will, what I will do is say a word about another related cycle that is um, important uh, for plants and bacteria. And this cycle is called the glyoxylate cycle. And the glyoxylate cycle is usually more confusing to students than I think it should be. Okay? First of all, plants and bacteria use the citric acid cycle. They also use the glyoxylate cycle when it's to their advantage. And no, you don't need to figure out when their advantage is. What you will see when I show you the glyoxylate cycle is it overlaps with the, many of the enzymes of the citric acid cycle. It has some differences, but several of the enzymes of the citric acid cycle are used in the glyoxylate cycle. Because bacteria and yeast and plants can do the glyoxylate cycle, they have the ability to do things that we cannot. And I'm going to tell you one of those, if you want to remember this for the exam, will be really good. We cannot make glucose from acetyl-CoA in net amounts. Okay? We cannot make glucose from acetyl-CoA in net quantities. Bacteria and plants can do that. And they can do that because of the uniqueness of the glyoxylate cycle. Now, that's where we start. So the glyoxylate cycle enables plants, yeast, bacteria to make glucose in net amounts from acetyl-CoA. If we could do that, we could make glucose from fatty acids. We can't do that. We'll see why later. But we cannot make glucose from fatty acids, at least not in net amounts. Well, the glyoxylate cycle, what is it? The glyoxylate cycle is overlaid on top of the citric acid cycle. What does that mean? Well, the citric acid cycle is the bigger circle on the outside. It's all the reactions of the citric acid cycle. The glyoxylate cycle short circuits that. Okay? Now, how does it short circuit it? Well, it short circuits that, short circuits it in this way. When we get to isocitrate in the citric acid cycle, Plants and bacteria have an enzyme called isocitrate lyase that enables them to break isocitrate into two pieces. Our only option when we get to isocitrate is to decarboxylate and make alpha-ketoglutarate. So the glyoxylate cycle bypasses the decarboxylations. It bypasses them. It does that by splitting the six-carbon molecule into a four-carbon molecule and a three-carbon molecule. Okay. Now, for us, I said it's overlaid. They're actually cheating here. For us, we go isocitrate, we go alpha ketoglutarate, we go succinyl CoA, and then we go succinate. Right. So they've bypassed in their cycle. They've bypassed two decarboxylations, going from isocitrate to alpha ketoglutarate, and going from alpha ketoglutarate to succinyl CoA. We throw those away as CO2. Now, we don't just throw them away because we're making NADH, you may recall. And NADH, as we will see, is good because it's useful for energy. So this pathway that you see on the screen doesn't produce as much energy as the citric acid cycle does. So there's a hint right there. Plants and bacteria aren't going to be doing this if they're needing energy. How does it work? Well, here's isocitrate. 
Here's succinate. We know in the, if we use the enzymes of the citric acid cycle that succinate can go to fumarate, can go to malate, can go to exaloacetate. No surprise there, right? However, we have this extra entity called glyoxylate, which is a two-carbon molecule that can be used for something. Okay? And what it's used for is combining with acetyl-CoA. When we combine glyoxylate with acetyl-CoA, not we, plants, bacteria, and yeast, they use an enzyme that we also don't have called malate synthase. So plants, yeast, and bacteria have two enzymes that we don't, isocitrate lyase and malate synthase. These two enzymes allow them to take this glyoxylate and make malate by combining with a second acetyl-CoA. Now, if you're keeping track, we started with a six carbon molecule over here. We split it into two pieces. One of those pieces is over here is exaloacetate. The glyoxylate was combined with a second acetyl-CoA, and now, at this point, we would have two glyoxylates. I, I, I'm sorry, two glyoxylates, two exaloacetates. I can't even, can't even talk today. Two exaloacetates. Everybody's got a puzzled look on their face. We have two exaloacetates. Each turn of the glyoxylate cycle produces two exaloacetates. That's important, folks, because one of those is extra. If we want to keep the cycle going, we can throw one of them out and keep the other one in the cycle, keep it going. Because we add the next exaloacetate to acetyl-CoA, we've got citrate, isocitrate, and we go and do this. Now, it's for this reason that plants and bacteria and yeast can make glucose in net amounts because each time the cycle turns, another exaloacetate comes off, and that exaloacetate can be used to make glucose. We can't do that. If we try to take that exaloacetate away, what's going to happen to our citric acid cycle? It's going to go away, right? That's what we can do it, but we can't do it in net amounts. That's when I say net amounts. If we do, if we try to do it, we're going to, we're going to start killing our citric acid cycle. These guys can keep their glyoxylate cycle going by doing this. So the glyoxylate cycle is a very useful cycle. It's used by plants, bacteria, and yeast, as I said. And it's used because they have these two enzymes that we do not have. If we could use acetyl-CoA to make glucose, we'd have a really good way of burning fat into something useful. It'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Okay. Just make sure you don't get any carbohydrates at all in your diet, and you would, you would automatically convert fat into glucose. That'd be kind of cool. Unfortunately, we don't have that option. Okay, questions on that? Yes, back here. There are two. So one being produced from succinate and one being made from this glyoxylate plus another acetyl-CoA. Yes, ma'am. So it's isocitrate lyase and malate synthase. These two enzymes together are enzymes that we don't have. I, do, I can't say how widespread it is in fungi. I don't know that, uh, to be honest. But I would suspect it's fairly widespread. Yes, Sue. So, so then, when you get to that stage where we don't have the extra enzyme, but you know, you're getting two for one in the other process, so where does the extra material go? What's it used for? It's not being turned into an extra. You're talking about here? This, is that what I said? In other words, up to that stage, you have sort of the same number of kind of building blocks. Right. Well, all that we're doing, remember that all we're doing is we're starting with, with um, exaloacetate. We do this reaction, we do this reaction, we do two, two decarboxylations, and we're right back where we started. So we're like that, that uh, gerbil on the, on the running wheel, right? It doesn't get anywhere. Be, well, actually, I shouldn't say that because we are getting somewhere. But the cycle doesn't have any net products, okay? So the cycle just goes along and it.